today we're going to talk about one simple thing, how you can take better photographs on your phone. I've got mine. Let's go. So today's plan of action is a quick little hike up the Cedar Summit Trail just outside Squamish. So, we're back. Uh, my GoPro woes continue. Do you want to know what the most common question I'm asked about cameras and photography is? What camera should I buy? Always, like, anybody who finds out you're a photographer, the first thing they do is go, oh, well, what's a good camera? Like, what, what should I do with that? And 99% of the time, I tell people to just use their phone. Even with all the gear that I have, I do find myself falling back to just using my phone to shoot. There's many reasons that I do that, and there's many reasons that just makes sense. I mean, phones are lighter, they're smaller, they're in your pocket, you carry them with you everywhere, so you've always got a camera on you. So before I start blabbering on about computational photography and all that crap, let's get on to some things that will help you take better photos with your phone. To be fair, these can be all applied to your camera as well. So the first thing I would always suggest people looking into on their phone is uh, what app are you using? Are you using Instagram? Are you using the built-in camera app? Are you using like a professional photography app that are do exist on phones? Um, you know, really dive into that because that will actually flavor your photos. That's when you click that, that is that app's interpretation depending on the information it gets. For example, the Google Pixel 7, which I use, uh, the built-in Pixel camera app is a great app, but there's one setting you can't turn off on on the Pixel 7, and that's HDR. I don't like HDR. I like getting a natural image and then putting my own stamp on it, and that doesn't allow me to do that. So I default to Lightroom in situations where I want to have that little bit more control and where I want to get like a more flat image out of it and do work on it after. It means I can get more control over the shots that I want. This internally then brings me on to getting to know the app that you're using. So with an app like Lightroom, you've got all the manual control over it, minus aperture, depending on the phone you have. You can just go in and mess around with your shutter speed. You can set it for as long as you want. You can bam that ISO number up as high as you want, make the photos look grainy as shit, and then you can edit all that in app. Now, the more you get to experiment with these things and learn how photography works, that is a great tool just in general because it means that that's stuff that you can directly carry over into your enthusiast level camera or, or when you jump into something with manual settings as a forefront feature on that camera. And all those things, they're the same across all devices, so it's a really good learning tool to know all that stuff anyway. So number two, moving on from my manual settings and all that sort of stuff, uh, the second tip that I have really does revolve more around yourself. Phones can be a bit tricky to hold, to be honest. They're not ergonomic when it comes to holding them up and taking a photo. It's like a little tiny thing. You have like that much surface area to grip. So in general, they're not as stable. So you need to stabilize yourself. Now, if you can get a portable tripod, brilliant. Set it up on a stable surface. If you can lean it up against something, give yourself three points of contact against something that will really help just flatten everything out. You want a steady shot to begin with. And if you're gonna be using auto, sometimes the phone might bring that shutter speed down that it just blurs everything. So making sure that you have a steady footing and you're safe will do amazing things for your photography. As well as that, if you do have like a mobile tripod or something, that's fantastic because it enables you to experiment more with maybe a long exposure and all that sort of stuff as well. Number three, this is kind of more of a general photography principle. Learn composition. Uh, one of the best things you can do starting out in photography is turn on grid lines on your camera and learn the rule of thirds. It's probably the like most basic thing that I always tell people to do. They'll come to me with their phone and I'll be like, okay, how do I take a good photo? And just to give anybody like a little like crash course in photography, if I have like two minutes with them, I'll just be like, okay, bring out your phone do your and just do go over the real thirds with them. That is one of the best things you can do is just learn 
basic composition and turning on the grid lines on your phone is actually a really good way to force yourself to think about that every time you open up your phone. How am I, how am I setting this up? Where are the people in the frame? Where's my subject? Use light as much as you can for number four. Yes, some of these phones can do amazing things in the dark, but the inherent small sensors of these devices just mean they don't really perform that well in the dark. So use the available light as much as you can. Go shoot at golden hour, it's kind of like a secret cheat mode. <laughs> Not much of a secret, it's a cheat mode during photography. Use shadows and stuff to your advantage. Use the way the light hits things to your advantage and, and just think about when you're going to shoot with it. You don't want a completely overcast day and you don't want a completely sunny day, but just think about that with the, with your camera and don't be disappointed if your phone doesn't take good pictures in the dark with it, personally. I've been shooting on phones for years. This is the first phone that I've got a good picture in the dark, but I don't think it takes good pictures in the dark. <laughs> Very, very common one for everybody, I would always tell them. Take more than you need. The reason when you go to any sort of sporting event or uh, music event or even weddings is you hear so many clicks when people are taking photos is because they're taking loads. You want to make sure you take as many as you can so that you can pick the best one and post, pick it after, then you get the better photo and you're not going back and looking at the photo. Take as many as you can straight away of the moment. When you do that as well, you keep the flow of when you're taking a photo or when you're when a moment's happening in front of you. If, if you decide to stop and be like, oh, I need to reframe this, give me a second. No, you just take a load of photos and let the subjects do what they're doing and you'll get a winner in one of them. It isn't film anymore. Cost isn't as a big of a concern, so you can just fill up your memory card and delete it after. And that's my tips uh, for helping you improve your smartphone photography or just your photography in general and getting yourself into uh, the game of taking good photos with your phone, which is getting easier and easier to do. I've got some great keepers that I've scattered through this video that were all taken on my phone. Um, I'll make it clear that they were taken on my phone. I'm gonna have to go back through my Google photos uh, as well, which I have set up to back up all my photos on my phone. So I know when I take a photo, it's on my computer by the time I get home. So big ups to Google Photos, to be honest. I actually can't recommend it enough. I tell everybody to use it, even if you have an iPhone. I know a lot of people have iPhones who use Google Photos because of the integration with everything. It's so easy to use. Um, yeah, but if you enjoyed the video, leave a little like, subscribe, it's always helpful. Uh, comment below if you have any tips that you think I missed or you just have any tips or additions to the stuff that I have uh, discussed or if I made any errors. Yeah, that happens. I do my best. We're all human. Anyway, have a good week. I have some other videos coming. Uh, I'm going away for like a week and a bit in May. But you'll see that on here. That will be. Cool.